Hello gamers, Muckluck here. Today is Wednesday, August 7th, and we've got some new Guild Wars 2 news today, and we're going to go over that right now. Sharp Lessons Spear Beta Feedback Update. This is a uh, news post that they posted on their forums just a little while ago. Uh, it reads, Greetings, Wayfinders. My name is Taylor Trigg Brooks. I'm a combat designer here at ArenaNet. We ran a beta event in June for the new Guild Wars 2 Janther Wilds combat feature, Land Spear Proficiency. Oh no, now even they're officially saying Land Spears. Today I'll go over the feedback we saw about Spears and the changes you can expect to see when the weapons are released this August. This blog will outline what we will, what we feel are the most impactful changes at a broad level. The full list of changes will be detailed in the expansion release notes. And we've got a picture here of all the different uh, classes flexing with their spears. I, uh, I think <laughs> some of these have like I, I can guess what classes those are supposed to be. That one's green, probably a necromancer. All right, elementalist. Spear wielding elementalist. Okay, first off, before we even read it, I have not read these yet. My main thing with the elementalist is it was kind of fun to play, like sh sh you know, summoning volcanoes and the big circles and stuff like that. The water blender, the the d tornado that threw things up in the air. Um, the, my biggest thing was the giant circle. The giant circle was cool. It's pretty. The art team did a great job. It's just not practical. It, uh, it, it blocks the ground for too much, and their short-term solution was, okay, we'll make it to where only the Ellie sees it. Great, so only your elementalists are going to be standing in red circles and dying. Like, that, that wasn't, in my opinion, that wasn't a good solution. So, let's read on and see if they tweaked that at all. Spear-wielding elementalists sought to harness the power of natural disasters to bring calamity to their enemies. It is the most visually ambitious weapon we've created, and we couldn't be prouder of the art team's work. However, in the beta, the damage wasn't as impressive as the visuals were. We agree with the feedback that the weapon's power level landed too low, and you can expect to see damage increases for all game modes, especially for the capstone etching skills. Alongside damage enhancements, we'll be making the following quality of life adjustments to the weapon. Etching durations will be increased by a few seconds, while Ripple's distance is now controllable through a ground target. Seethe and Energize will not affect auto attacks, and the visual noise of etchings has been reduce, reduced. We've also added a strike damage component to full gore and rebalanced some of its effectiveness away from the damage over time in PvE for a more immediate effect. We're hoping these changes result in a smoother experience with greater impact. So all those sound good. Uh, I'm especially curious about the visual noise has been reduced. I would love to see like a before and after GIF, but I guess we'll see that in time. Uh, I, I honestly, I just, I, I feel like bef the version we had during the beta on an Ellie with a spear in a raid or strike environment would die. That was my main concern. Uh, you know, I, I want them to ha have fun just as much as everybody else. I just, uh, I, I, if they can't see the red circles, they're going to get hit. Necromancer. Uh, okay, Necromancer felt in PvE, the spear was just a great sword with almost the same mechanics, but worse damage. But in PvP, it did have the option of teleporting behind someone and oh my wash and daruing and, you know, going for that assassin. It felt, felt like an assassination weapon because of the teleport on top of someone thing. Plus, you could precast stuff. You could, like, start teleporting and then start casting, like, something else and have the cast finish the moment you appeared on them and they would have almost no time to react to it. Necromancers aim to execute their foes with both Spear and Soul Shards. With the gameplay loop of building and spending these Soul Shards, we saw that the Shard economy was too dominated by Isolate and Distress. We're increasing Soul Shard generation outside of the fourth Spear skill, and Soul Shard duration will now be refreshed when you gain more Shards. Ah, oh, interesting, because before, when you just by autoing, you couldn't even keep six Shards up, because uh, they each had their own duration, and the oldest one would wear off before you would get the final one. With those changes and a lowering of the threshold needed to immobilize with Addle, we're hoping the weapon has a more consistent power level and doesn't feel as weak when you misisolate. Additionally, Extirpate will now generate life force as well to help you follow up on its big hit. Interesting. Uh, big circle or not, they go down state. Well, yes, but I want them to have the same chance as everybody else. Uh, Mesmer. Uh, Mesmer, uh, I will say of all of the classes... I think the Mesmer community seemed the happiest with what they got. When I was looking at the, uh, the, there was a Reddit thread for every class where people were giving feedback, and the Mesmer one was all just people like having a happy fun party. And everyone else was like complaints in different ways. Like, oh, I hate this. Oh, I don't like this. The Mesmer one was just like, yeah, love and life. 
So let's see what they did. Mesmer Spear provided a unique gameplay pattern, and we were happy to uh, see it find its use in many places. The beta event gave us clarity about how we could make the weapon feel even better. The largest problem with feedback we got was on the weapon's performance, varied a lot depending on whether you had clarity. Clarity will now be gained by hitting Mind of the Gap, regardless of whether it was an outer edge hit. But that outer edge will still be important. We're updating the visual to better outline where that hitbox is, and the skill will deal damage, uh, increase damage as well as a guaranteed critical hit on the outer edge. Uh, so what we can probably expect is uh, the way it worked before is like you'd be in the middle and you had a circle around you and you were supposed to hit the enemy with the edge of the circle. What you could probably expect is there is going to be a second circle. So you're going to have like almost like the, the same visual as before and then almost like a donut around it. And anything within the donut is what takes the highest amount of damage from uh, Mind of the Gap. Uh, so yeah you, yeah, you should know about the edge, exactly. Imaginary Inversion is also seeing a shift in how the skill functions. To help the consistency of the tools it brings, it will now always clear conditions from you at the start of casting with no clarity required. It will also heal you if you evade an attack, even if you don't land the attack portion. Clarity will now increase this healing. So that means that you can use that skill basically as a dodge, and additionally, if you successfully dodge, you will get a heal. Pretty cool. Uh, the final large change to the weapon concerns phantasms. We saw in the beta that the lancers routinely got outplayed by terrain, whether it was a cliff or a pebble. <laughs> The Lancers have taken a more vertical approach to their attack and will now jump in the air and launch a spear at their target instead. The spear will damage an area on impact, a much more reliable follow-up to the Mesmer. <laughs> That's good. I'm just, um, the visual image of the, of like the Mesmer with a bunch of clones and all the clones are constantly hopping and throwing and it's just, it's, it's gonna look like a party. Uh, Thief. Uh, and yes, I know it said phantasms, not clones. It was just a visual. Thief. Thief's Spear endeavored to bring the skill chaining mechanic used by assassins in the original Guild Wars 2 in the modern game. So the Thief one, I felt like I didn't have enough brain wrinkles to play it. Like, you know, your one had an auto chain, your two had, an, had a chain, your three had a chain, and you could be like, you know, one, three, two, one, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, 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 three, 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 three. And it, all of them were different. And like, there was a lot of options. And it was like, I could have someone tell me the best pattern and just memorize that pattern and perform that pattern. But as far as like changing it on the fly based on the situation, uh, there, there were people better than me. Uh, we were pleased to see how it turned out, but we found that it could use some polish. We will be changing a rule of how the skill chains progress. The chain will now always progress when you use a skill instead of relying on hitting a target. The same is to help the weapon feel smoother with a skill queuing system and enhance its reliability in competitive modes. This weapon ended strong in PvE, so there will be some unsurprising downward adjustments to its damage output. Its finishing skills and stealth skills will have their target cap raised to help Thief Spear's identity as a cleaving weapon. Uh, yeah, there were reports of people doing really high amounts of damage on target dummies when they were practicing with this weapon. Uh, among the highest of the different classes. Ranger. Um, as is no secret, uh, I am a Ranger main, although I do dabble in all the other classes. Uh, the Ranger 1 was fun mechanically, but the damage was, like, in the dumpster. Like, it was... The, the version we got during the beta was not good for any role in any game mode. The damage was just so low. Uh, additionally, the 5 was kind of awkward, because, like, if you hit the 5 one time, you stealthed. If you hit the 5 while you were stealthed, you threw a net on someone, which was kind of neat, and it had its uses, but that meant you had to use two charges of the 5 to throw the net. Uh, you could not do both with one charge. Um, much like Elementalist Spear, Ranger Spear had a strong narrative theming, but didn't quite follow through fully in the game. Some of its skills, like stealth skills and beasting, lack the damage needed to make it a competitive option against other Ranger weapons. Yep. Additionally, due to the popularity of traps and other pulsing damage skills, it was hard to weave in and out of stealth and complete your attack before you were revealed. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, I actually, um, some of my really, really old guides, uh, you should not go look at those, they're, they're, uh... <sighs> Uh, would involve, like, you know, PvP on uh, Ranger, like the six-ton trap beast and stuff. And it was tricky, because if you went into stealth from, like, a stealth combo, and you had a flame trap on the ground, or a snake trap, and that pulsed, or a condition did a tick of damage on someone while you went into stealth, you would immediately get pulled out of the stealth. Uh, you'd get, you'd get uh, revealed right away. Um, so if... 
you know, if you're full power and you don't have anything ticking in the area, then you can go stealth and then do the attack. But if you go stealth and then you have like a bleed tick happen, then you're revealed and the combo doesn't work. It, the combo fails. Uh, and even in PvP, or sorry, PvE, that would be annoying because it would be a damage loss if you can't do the combos. Uh, to remedy this, Panther's Prowl will now grant Hunter's Prowess for a short duration. Hunter's Prowess will allow you to use your next stealth skill even if you were revealed. Interesting. Um, all right. Another issue is Panther's Prowl and Spiderweb sharing a cooldown. Yes, I just mentioned that a moment ago. Spiderwebs was the net. This was consistent uh, with the rest of the weapon's skills, but it made the opportunity cost for using Spiderwebs too large. We'll be separating their cooldown so that using the web feels good and you don't have to worry about wasting a charge of stealth. Cool. Uh, as I said, the five had two charges, and if you were not stealthed and you hit five, you stealthed. If you were stealthed and you hit five, it threw the web, which meant you using the web involved using all your stealth charges. So that's kind of neat. Um, all right, cool. Looking forward to trying that. Engineer. Uh, engineer, my thoughts on Engineer was it, I don't know that it really made a new role because it was a Condi weapon and NG already had Condi weapons, but it was fun. It was very flashy. You know, it had eye candy. Uh, the uh, you know, skating around on the lightning with the, the short cooldown movement skill was quite fun. Uh, so I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't know that it's going to br open up any new builds, but it was very fun. Um, Engineer Spear surged onto the scene, finding a home mainly in condition-based builds and PvE. It sported competitive numbers, but it was still rough around the edges in places. Keeping track of who was focused and for how long wasn't an easy task, so we'll be adding a visual aura to your focused target. We'll also be adding an effect to the player when they have a focused target, making it easier to determine how long the mark will persist. Some casting times were also a bit slow, they'll be sped up to help the weapon feel smooth. Lastly, Devastator will see speed increases, range increase, and a significant reduction in its aftercast. Okay. Uh, Revenants. Uh, the Revenant one, the main, like, I would say my feedback on the Revenant spear was it was very pretty. It looked awesome. It didn't feel great to use. Uh, it was very slow. And the damage was not very high. So it's like the art team did great. Everyone else, that. Ah. All right, Revenant Spear aimed to be a heavy weapon that built up strength, culminating in powerful damage. However, the beta we saw that the, uh, that this weight was unwieldy and its punches lacked impact. Casting times are being decreased across many skills. Nice, and we are increasing the condition variety of the skills to help the damage stick. Crushing Abyss's maximum stacks has been reduced from 5 to 3, making the weapon reach its maximum potential a lot faster. Abyssal Blot will now pull in immediately, helping the weapon set itself up better. Uh, Abyssal Blot had to delay before, I believe. The result of these changes is a more fluid weapon with more tools to secure its damage. And there's a picture of some heavyweight guy. I assume that's supposed to be a Revenant standing over a spider. Um, oh, hey, Aizen. Was stupid, low damage, cost too much energy, no damage. <laughs> low damage and also no damage. Oh, my gosh. Guardian. Uh, Guardian... Uh, from reading, I, I didn't try the Guardian firsthand. A lot of people I was reading about, it, it was kind of a hybrid weapon. So some people were trying it in heal builds, but they didn't feel like it was better than the options. Some people tried it in damage builds, but they didn't feel like it was better than the alternatives. So uh, curious to see what they do here. Guardian spear shone brightly in world versus world, especially in large scale fights. Spear's biggest pain point was how its second skill functioned. Their wind shark gifted a tier one sub to Lord underscore Hizen. Hizen. They have given 146 gift subs in the channel. Thank you, Winshark. Uh, Spear's biggest pain point was how the second skill functioned. Pressing the key again to stop early felt awkward and had a few bugs. Helio Rush in seeing an update similar to the Elementalist Ripple. It is now a ground target and you will stop when reaching the target location. Its toolkit is getting some updates, like improvements to its self-healing and healing on Solar Storm, and Symbol of Luminance will now always apply resistance to allies once. Okay. Uh, warrior. The Warrior, okay, my thoughts on the Warrior Spear before I read this, was it felt odd. And uh, the reason was, it was a ranged weapon that did better if you were close. So then what's the point of the ranged weapon? Now, it did have a splash damage thing. If enemies were clustered up, you could splash damage them with the auto. That was pretty cool. Um, I do really, I don't recall if it was the two or the three skill. There was one skill where, uh, like, you use it when enemies swinging at you, and you would evade the hit, leap backwards, slide along the ground, and then swing back at them. It looked really cool. It was really fun. It felt good to use. It was kind of, it kind of felt like doing a counter. Um, 
the other skills, I can barely even remember. <laughs> I had so much fun with that one, I can barely remember the others. Uh, Alright, Spear on Warrior was met with mixed reception. Uh, it was a strong option in PvP, but didn't stand out in other places. Its ranged threshold mechanic also didn't garner a warm welcome. Warrior's Spear will be updated to feature a new mechanic. We want to emphasize the force the warrior is launching their spears with, but in different ways. Instead of effectiveness varying by distance, skills will now do more damage to the first target struck. Spear Swipe will get some updates to functionality, such as a cooldown refund if you evade an attack with it. That was the skill I was talking about. Uh, the most important... No, hello. Okay. The most important note is that the Spear Marshal has been sent back to Remedial Javelin School as Spear Marshal support has been improved and will now track the target better. <laughs> what? That wraps things up with the high level changes coming to Spears when they launch with Guild Wars 2 Janthier Wilds. For the exact numbers and smaller changes, be sure to check out the official release notes when the expansion is live August 20th. Until next time, and I'll see you in the mist. And August 20th is uh, Tuesday, not the next Tuesday, but the one after. Okay, so those are the vague, we don't have the exact numbers, but those are the vague changes that are coming soon. Some of those I am very happy to read and, uh, you know, look forward to seeing them. Uh, yeah, I look forward to trying them out and hoping that they solve all the problems that they are trying to solve. Um, as a reminder, since we just mentioned the 20th, on August 20th, I will be streaming the launch of Janthier Wilds the pretty much the entire day. Uh, I'm just going to eat breakfast, then get started, and I'll be here till midnight. We've also got... 25 legendaries to give away. I don't know if I'll be able to give them all away because I usually try to do one an hour, so there's a lot of hype for each legendary, but we've got 25 to give out. So there will be a lot of giveaways. We've got, there will be a lot of giveaways. So I'm just going to say that right now. So if, you, uh, if you're bored on the 20th or if you're at work and your boss isn't looking, you want to tune in, maybe win some stuff on the channel. I'll be live on Twitch and also YouTube. And uh, if you haven't pre-purchased Janthier Wilds, Use someone's referral link. Use mine. Use wooden teapots. Use mighty potatoes. Just someone. Uh, mine is in the comment section, or is already in the description below. And uh, yeah, if you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns about this uh, this video or any of the data we went over, put it in the comment section. And as always, I'll fight you there. <laughs>